Welcome to Paul vs. Destin, the show where we don't fight, but we often argue. Joining me today is, of course, Paul. I don't know about often, but okay. <laughs> often. And you know what I really yeah. like? The logo hit. Perfect. All right, we're back, Paul. This episode, we are actually talking about game of the year. We're going to talk about the games of 2021 that have us really, really interested. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about Two of our picks for our game of the year contender that we have played, other contenders that we see coming down the line in 2021. Let's talk about third parties. Uh, what third parties do we think are really going to resonate with the audience? And then who do you think will do the best this fall out of all the games for the year? Or sorry, not this fall for 2021. What game is just going to going to do crazy well? So let's start with the game of the year conversation, because, you know, we're in August uh, soon enough, we'll be talking about our game of the year and, and picking it. And I think it's good to sort of get at this a little bit early. So what are some games that you have played in 2021 this far that really clicked with you that you really think are your personal game of the year? Uh, well, this will be fun. <laughs> I think I have two choices that'll make people somewhat upset for different reasons. Um <laughs> So I, I'll say this as a disclaimer, like I have missed some of the big obvious guns. Uh, I have not played Returnal. Uh, I've, people are starting to put like that Ascend game on their list some of the time. Um, I Which one? The the Cyberpunk one. Oh, Ascent. Yes. Yeah, Ascent. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so I, I missed a few of, of the contenders that I may get back to. But like I, I could take one look at Returnal and I'm like, this game's not for me. I know I'm not going to enjoy this. <laughs> it literally like, has Destiny guns in it. Yeah, but like I, I just don't love roguelike type things. <laughs> like I beat Bloodborne; that was enough for me. That's <laughs> okay. That's okay. all I need. Uh, so okay. So the two games that kind of stand out to me so far, I, I doubt either will end up being number one by the end of the year, given kind of what we're still uh, waiting for. But in my own little loot shooter corner of the world, I maintain that fundamentally, Outriders is a pretty solid game. <laughs> Outriders, uh, and your second pick is uh, Avengers. My second pick, <laughs> Avengers <laughs> came out uh, a year ago, I'm so it doesn't count. Uh, maybe, maybe Avengers War for Wakanda in like two weeks here. Mm. Um, my second pick is probably Ratchet and Clank. That's a game that I, I really enjoyed. That I, it's probably not going to be like my top game of the year, but it was very fun. Uh, Outriders, I gave a unusually high score to. <laughs> in my initial review, um, but I genuinely think the campaign is very good and very well structured. And I was surprised by how much I liked the story. Like I'm a big sci-fi guy and this was like a genuinely interesting kind of unique story, I thought, um, which is something you don't really see in this genre that often. Uh, and then we went through this really awful period where there were these like horrific glitches, like the game deleting everyone's gear and stuff and like just utter, utter nonsense for like two or three months. And then the game got good again, where they fixed all the major problems and they really did uh, a lot of work on the end game, like increasing legendary drop rates. Uh, and it, it's a game that, unlike Avengers, say, or Anthem, like understands what it is trying to be at its core. And that is a very clear copy of Diablo, but that works. <laughs> like it really, it really works. Uh, so it, it gets a lot of the fundamentals right. And like it's, it's at the point where like I genuinely want to see an expansion for Outriders because I think they could do some pretty cool stuff with it um i'll let you do one of your games before i launch into a whole ratchet and clank thing but oh, all right well i mean for me the one that really stuck with me the one that i started playing it going in with fairly low expectations and it just hooked me in a way a game hasn't hooked me in a really really long time i couldn't put it down uh returnal i loved returnal i love the weapons i love the challenge of the game i love that once you learn how to play the game really, really well and do your best with whatever RNG you happen to end up getting. It it just had this great risk reward. I I cautiously use the word balance because I know I would get a lot of a lot of guff for that. Because you can have terrible runs where you just get absolutely hosed. But when you have that really, really good run and you're able to just go in and slaughter everybody and feel good about that, uh, it feels awesome. And it feels awesome because you've learned the game. You've taken the time. You've learned the ins and outs of combat. You've learned how to play the game. And uh, it has like this really weird story 
I sort of like games that give you just enough where you kind of got to make your own interpretation. I do feel like Returnal should have given us maybe a little bit more because it's like pretty far out there uh, in terms of storytelling. And uh, yeah, Returnal is is still my game of the year. Uh, Ratchet and Clank isn't on my list, though. So I would love to hear like I, I love Ratchet and Clank. I think it's an yeah. excellent game. But for me, man, I was all about Returnal. So let's hear from you. Why is Ratchet and Clank your second pick? I will say my list is also smaller than most people's because like the games I am playing are like <laughs> Destiny 2 80% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I stick with my my live services. Um, Ratchet & Clank, uh, I, I have not, I've never played a Ratchet & Clank game. So that was a, a unique experience for me in that like I had no history with the series. So this is not like nostalgia clouding my vision of, you know, the glory days of that series. Um, I think it works both as a very fun adventure game and a kind of crazy tech demo for uh, PS5 or even generally just sort of this new generation of insta load. You know, Xbox has this too in some games, but like insta load environments, like stuff that you would have never even thought was possible uh, last generation. And like, it's just, I, I really enjoyed all the diverse selection of weapons. I, I loved kind of raking everything up. I love games where you have to find secrets and, uh, collectibles and stuff and it didn't it didn't feel like it wore out its welcome like it ended kind of exactly when i wanted it to and like you can go and do a new game plus if you want and you want to keep doing things uh and yet it was kind of like the perfect i guess breather for me and all my other live service games without being something that uh you know you know was too too way far outside my comfort zone like it felt like the type of game i haven't played in a very long time yet it was still kind of uh a lot of fun to come back to. So I, I really did appreciate it for what it was. I don't know if it'll be in my top five by the end of the year, given all the stuff that has yet to come out. Um, and yet that is definitely a game I really appreciated. Yeah. So I'm actually struggling with my second title. I could say uh, flight simulator cause it came out on console. Right. And I, I think it did a lot of stuff to showcase just how many optimizations the team at Microsoft or at least Asoba was able to do to get that game running on consoles. That's impressive in its own right. But Flight Simulator technically came out last year. So this is like a console release um, further along the line. And I, I think I voted Flight Simulator one of my games of the year last year. So I'm going to say I, I was just looking through the titles where you were talking about Ratchet and Clank and why it's your pick. And um, I was struggling to come up with my second entry, but one game and EA just said it sold better than expected. Mass Effect Legendary Edition is probably yeah. my second mm -hmm. pick for Game of the Year. Now, I, I recognize that it's a remaster and it's a re-release, so I'm struggling with these two titles, right? Flight Simulator technically came out last year. Mass Effect Legendary Edition, no, the team put so much care into at least making the original game look better without sacrificing, I don't know, it's hard to say, like, they could have took completely rebuilt the game from the ground up. They were able to find this happy middle ground where it's still that original game you love. They touched up all the characters, like, that were really, really important to the story. And I'm really, really happy with the result of that game. And apparently so were a lot of gamers. I don't think by the end of the year that Mass Effect Legendary Edition is going to be on a lot of people's lists. But I think it's one of the the best remasters that Bioware has ever done. Cause they, they like sort of have done the collections before for mass effect, but they didn't really change anything. So if you had those base games, it's just like, Oh, you can play those same games, but digitally now, but they still had all the problems. I was really happy with how they improved legendary edition for 2021. So I, I think that's currently my second pick, but that's look, pick. I think it counts. <laughs> All right. Well, looking forward, though, we have a lot of big releases coming out this fall. We can even say the ones that haven't been confirmed as delayed yet, for example, feel free to keep those on your list until we get official confirmation. But um, what would you say would be your second pick for like your or sorry, what's something that's not out yet that would be a con that you think will be a contender for you in 2021? Um. I'm going to I'm going to stick with the assumption that Horizon's going to be delayed out of the year. OK, I, just don't, I, I think it's fine to kind of assume that. Uh, so no point speculating. Uh, I'm going to leave Halo Infinite to you, even though I would put that on my list. No, <laughs> that's talk fine. About that. um, I, I, it's interesting because like I'm actually I, I'm kind of conflicted. So if we're doing two games, 
one I would have immediately said before this is Diablo 2 Resurrected, but now we have to kind of wrestle with the moral implications of yeah. is this a game I should boycott now, maybe, or is that also bad and doing more harm than good? Um, I, I played I played the test for that, and I was I was very impressed by the work that was done on that. It's Vicarious Visions, which I guess you know, they've done a lot of work on that, and they until recently have been separated kind of from from Blizzard and stuff. They just were combined with them, which in hindsight now seems less than ideal. Um, but that that is definitely something I was looking forward to because I'm I was just such a huge Diablo fan. Um, I I don't know what my coverage plans are going to end up being for the ga- that game. Uh, I I don't have an answer to like the moral question of like everything that's gone on. Like, should we be supporting that game or like, do we support the workers, you know, regarding that game, but just in terms of the actual game, what I saw was a very, it was, it's like mass effect. It's a very faithful uh, recreation of the original, like they've done some quality of life stuff yet. There's still like the kind of annoyances of the, of the original to make it kind of uh, resonate with, with fans. Like, you don't, you don't need to like, give us like 50 times the inventory space in your, in your thing, like the new games do, like you still have to do the little Jenga puzzle to, to fit everything in your inventory. Um, And it's just, it's, it's a pretty gorgeous remaster. So it's going to be hard to, to, to not pick that up, but I'm, I'll, I'll see how things progress and, and what I'm feeling then, but that would definitely be one of my most anticipated games kind of given my long history with, with Diablo as a franchise and Diablo two specifically. So you are right. Halo Infinite is one of the games that I think have a potential to be the the best game of 2021. Uh, I think I think Ratchet and Clank is going to give it a run for its money. Um, I think Returnal might, but I feel like I think it's going to be like on the Xbox side. I think it'll wind up being Halo if it's as good as that technical preview we just experienced, because everybody's talking about how much fun they had with that. So if it's if it stays at that level of fun, you know, like not even talking about the graphics or everything else. It's just fun. Right. And that's the most important thing when you're talking about these games. If it's able to maintain that, I think it does have a potential to be game of the year. But I actually want to talk about a different game that you you probably wouldn't expect from me. Uh, Metroid Dread. I think Metroid Dread from Nintendo is going to be an excellent game. I, I adore Zero Mission. I adore Metroid Fusion. And this is right in line with those games. It is, it's like finally encapsulating a story of Samus. And I think it's totally fine to release a game like that on the Switch. It doesn't need to be like ultra powerful or anything like that. Uh, I love what they've done with the the side-scrolling Metroids. And this game has been in development for like ever. (laughs) And I I think it's going to be sort of a... I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody, but I think Metroid Dread is going to be on probably at least a lot of top 10 list, if not taking it for a lot of people. So I kind of snuck in two there. So I'll let you go for the next one. <laughs> well, yeah. So I guess I guess there's a split between what am I most interested in this fall and what do I think will be on list. the game of the year list. Yeah. So like if I'm doing that, Forza Horizon, I mean, I, I think that yeah. will probably maintain the level of quality of the series and be extremely good on, on series X in particular. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not a, even a huge racing person, but I'm certainly going to pick that up and play it. Uh, and I, am well, it's game pass. So, you know, pick anything up. It's just there. Uh, <laughs> but I, I obviously think that's going to land on um, many top 10 lists and, and Forza were like, you know, that was the highest rated games of like the whole, like last generation when we're talking about Xbox exclusives. So I, mm-hmm. I, I doubt they're going to screw it up. So that's that's an easy pick for me um, in terms of what will probably be on a lot of lists. In terms of what I'm most curious about, I am really, really wondering how the Eidos Montreal Guardians of the Galaxy game is going to go. Because oh. you know me and my history with Avengers. And like, <laughs> yeah. this, this this to me kind of seems like an example of like, okay, well, what if they didn't do the live service thing with Avengers? What if they just like drilled down on a, on a couple of the heroes and made like a real substantive like story campaign instead, which is probably would have gone better. Mm-hmm. So now they're doing that with a whole like, you know, dialogue options and character choices. And uh, it's like some RPG aspects, but I, I like, I wasn't actually like that impressed with anything I saw. And yet like, I like Eidos Montreal so much from, from Deus Ex. Like I, I absolutely want to see what they can do with that property. 
I think you kind of run into the familiar Avengers game problem of, hey, we just had like, you know, two or three movies with all of these heroes that are cast with well-known actors. And now you've replaced them with not as good versions. So it's got a lot to overcome if they're going to kind of get past that aspect of it. But that actually ended up being kind of the least of Avengers problems. Um, So in terms of things I'm personally kind of vested in that are are fully new games, uh, that's definitely on the list. But I, for me personally, like if we're just doing real real quick things, uh, a lot of expansions are, are really interesting to me. Uh, Iki Island, Ghost of Tsushima, War for Wakanda, Black Panther for Avengers, and then obviously whatever the next Destiny season is. <laughs> yeah. Um, like the, the, the all these live service things are going to be releasing, you know, new chapters uh, in effect. And so those are kind of what I will be spending a lot of my time with. Um, in the coming months and working in kind of the full releases when I can. Good picks. Uh, I want to actually agree with you on a few things. Uh, Diablo two. I, I do agree that everything considered, I, I do think Diablo two has a chance to be on a lot of lists. I think it's going to be a really, really cool game. We sort of looked at it or I, I sort of took a look at it when it was like pre-launch. We we're in the alpha. We were able to post some gameplay and what they managed to do there is, is truly impressive. Uh, you didn't really talk about Kena Bridge of Spirits. I think that's one mm-hmm. that's going to be on a lot of lists. And while we're talking about remakes, I think Ghost of Tsushima. I don't know where Icky Island's going to fit. I don't feel like the remaster or the remake of Ghost of Tsushima is going to be on like a best of list because it's largely. I don't know. I, I don't feel like that's it's cheating. It's just a next gen upgrade. That's yeah, not yeah. A, like a remaster per yeah, se. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. But I think Icky Island could be. So if we're talking DLC expansions, I think Icky will be on a lot of lists. Um, separate from that, uh, Forza Horizon Five I think has potential to be uh, a game of the year. Like it could be the game of the year. But I don't know. Going yeah. up against Halo and Ratchet, for me, I think the two, the three big games in the room, basically are uh, Forza, Halo, and Ratchet and & Clank. Right now, for me, those are the three that I think people are going to be looking at. You don't think so? I disagree. Well, wh- I, I would so sub in... Like, I, for, for talking lists, for industry lists, yeah. I would replace Ratchet & Clank with Returnal. I think Returnal will be on... No way. Will be ranked higher by most people. I You don't think so? I, I that's think... Like the, that's like the prestige game. Like, totally. I think I, I think Ratchet & Clank is, is not viewed at the same level by critics i don't think uh as returnal but we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one i th- i think insomniac is so highly regarded and ratchet and clank was so polished and it had so many options for like how you want to play you can go for like you know visual fidelity and you know ray tracing and all the bells and whistles or you can uh, play with high frame rate and I-, I i think it's going to get a lot of praise this holiday season um did i get my second i pick, I, I mean i think it's ha- i think it's halos to lose honestly after after even me not getting into the preview, let's not mm. go into that. But um, <laughs> just I, I, nobody said anything bad about that preview. And, you know, that's even considering a, a number of tech issues. Uh, I, I just we don't know how the state of the campaign and how the open world will work and stuff. But like clearly something has happened in the past you know year or so to really kind of get this where it needed to be. Mm-hmm. And I, I would just be very surprised if if there was anything that was. I again, like I, I can see Forza, but Forza will always be like some of a niche. Game, right? yeah, it, yeah, it's a racing game, and it is always a racing game. It'll win best Whereas, racer, like, likely. Yeah, yeah. but like you, you know, so it, it's either like some game of the year is usually like some really popular indie darling or some giant AAA blockbuster that does everything it's supposed to, and like you're, you're not gonna like whatever the new Call of Duty game is is going to be the best line game of the year. Mm-hmm. Not going to win game of the year. It's just, it's not um, like Far Cry six. Like that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. th- th- things well, like that don't really seem in contention for, to, to me personally. But well, let's use that as a jumping off point, actually, because there is actually a third party title that largely is my second pick that I think everybody should be keeping their eye on. And that's Battlefield 2042. Looking at that multiplayer that's reveal and showing like how they're gonna they're gonna get a little goofy with it, and you're you're talking about Halo. A lot of people are gonna be in Halo for their the multiplayer experience. Battlefield 2042 is going to offer a lot of interesting stuff that is going to be different enough from Halo that I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in that game. Just the scale of the maps, the levolutions, the the portal or whatever it's called, where you're gonna be able to have all these goofy modes with different variables made by the community. 
I, I think it has a potential to be on a lot of people's radar. So Battlefield, not only is my second pick, but it is also one of the third party games that I think is going to be on a lot of lists just because I think it's going to be a great multiplayer experience. I mean, like it's Battlefield. They have a pretty solid track record, even if you count like the previous game, which is a little bit more contentious, like things functioned in that game as far as I know, <laughs> you know, so as, as long as it functions and it's more like a traditional Battlefield then I, I think it has a chance to go on. It's, well. it's no campaign, right? They, they cut it for just multiplayer. I think they said a campaign's coming later. I don't okay. remember. There was a story recently, but I'm, I not, think it's fine, but... I'm not like super following it. And then uh, the other one I want to talk about is X Defiant. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's messed up. Uh, Far Cry 6, though. You mentioned Far Cry 6. I mean, like the acting and the storytelling in that game looks interesting to me. What are your thoughts on Far Cry? They're all, it's just the same, but like they're all, they're all pretty good. I play every Far Cry game just out of force of habit. Like pretty much, you know, every time they come out, I will sit down and play it for 25 hours and clear all the maps and craft all the thing from bison hides and whatever I got to do. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I has a Far Cry game ever really landed on the t like the top three of, of my game of the year list. Probably not. Maybe I mean, maybe Far Cry 3, but like, it's just like, all right, we got this really charismatic villain that we cast with someone really good. And then you run around, you know, shooting things and clearing points. And like, they do, you know, they, they do certain things very well. The, the voice acting and, and some of the first person storytelling is good. It's just like, I, I would be surprised if it was like something I hadn't. It, it, it feels like a Call of Duty campaign to me where it's like, there's almost nothing they can do at this point to to break out of the formula to make it that interesting again like i think it'll be it'll be polished and uh giancarlo esposito will be like very good and yeah. like but i i don't know if it'll be anything more than just like a good solid okay game i i would be surprised well are there any third parties that we forgot to mention that you feel like maybe we should um i think we i mean again like the, this is the latest call of duty has ever announced and like even before all this activision blizzard stuff they were still going to do it like this they were going to do uh they were going to reveal it in warzone and like the new season of warzone is about to start and that's an interesting idea to, to do it in warzone they've, they've done kind of stuff like that in the past but not like a full reveal and we are like two three months away from from launch uh so it's i like I, it's going to be the best only game of the year like Almost certainly, I, I think, because it, it's so weird. It's, it's almost like an afterthought when we're having conversations like this. But that's, you know, that's just how it is. Um, and, you know, it's not smashing its own sales records every year. But I am curious this year, a combination of maybe some amount of Activision Blizzard backlash. Although by the time it's November, whatever, I would be surprised if we're at the same level of that, unfortunately, um, because people have short memories. Uh, but also, I mean, competing with in the multiplayer realm with 2042 and Halo Infinite as giant triple A mega franchise multiplayer shooter blockbusters that are not like battle royales. I, I think that is competition. It has not gone. I mean, when's the last time there was like, I mean, you know, we thought of Halo as like a serious multiplayer. Like, I don't remember Pretend. when five came out, but like even then it was, it doesn't really seem like it was at the same level as infinite has the potential to be. Yeah. So that I think is, could be an interesting kind of narrative heading into the fall here. You, br you bring up one important category that I don't think we talked about best continuous game. So like destiny <laughs> as example, apex, um, rainbow six, are there any of those games that you think have done anything so interesting that they should be part of that conversation? Like Final Fantasy 14 and Walker, I think is mm -hmm. going to be on a lot of lists. Final Fantasy 14 has continued to like just be stellar with their content and offer that community a ton of stuff. So uh, beyond the games I've mentioned, like Genshin Impact, do you think that's going to be one that's going to be memorable for 2021? That's that's interesting. Um, I mean, I mean, Genshin Impact is going to make a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know if it's going to be in like this is the best, you know, game in, in these kind of conversations like it Genshin, you know, keeps adding to the world and they, they just released a big new zone, which is very cool. And yet Genshin kind of has a hard limit in terms of like, OK, I did all the things like I'm going to hard put this down unless I want to like 
super farm for something specific. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a different category. Like you, you don't really log on to Genshin every day unless you're like the hardest of hardcore <laughs> players. Uh, and Apex, Apex is having like a moment. I mean, the to see this game evolve over the past, you know, two years or whatever it's been is is nothing short of kind of uh, miraculous. Considering it was it, it was originally like just launched like within a week of it being announced or a couple yeah. of days, and it came out of nowhere. And I, I made this point recently with all the Activision stuff, where it is essentially replaced Overwatch. Like it is Overwatch now in terms of you know getting hype for new seasons, getting hype for events, getting hype for skins, getting hype for new characters. Like that cycle where it was like this you know, enthusiasm and like, we love these characters. We love this world. That is apex. Now it is, it is almost entirely replaced overwatch. So I think that is something that has had a, a huge impact this past year. Uh, I, I know final fantasy 14 is also having a moment um, again at the expense of a game like world of Warcraft, uh, which is, you know, it's sapping players from there. And it's a game I purposely avoid because I do not have the life space to give <laughs> to final fantasy 14. Um, and then I think uh, this will be an ongoing game, and it's also technically a new release that we haven't touched on at all. But uh, New World, I mean, it seems possible that Amazon might actually release a good substantive MMO and an original IP at the same time. Like, the early previews have been received generally pretty well, I'd say. And that game is shaping up to be, I, I think, better than anyone predict. It just got delayed by another few weeks today. But like, yeah, I was like, did it get delayed? It got I, delayed I remember today. seeing that right before we recorded. <laughs> but it's still, it's still like late September or something. Yeah. So it didn't get like delayed out of the year. September um, So that that's that's kind of like a bl- like a dark horse X factor. But like we don't, we might not really know the state of that game for another year or so because it's an MMO and it, it's yeah. kind of hard to judge. You know, we're talking about Final Fantasy fourteen and like. When was the original version of that out when it was terrible? Like, oh, yeah. you know, it forever ago. So a long um, time ago. I, I would be surprised, you know, uh, if, if New World ha- was a long term success, just given the market. But it is it is starting out, you know, unusually well for given the context of Amazon just never making good games or any games at all, really. Uh, but they seem to have figured something out here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point. Um, there's a lot of games that we actually don't have release dates for that could potentially be mentioned, like maybe Scorn. I think Crossfire X is going to be cooler than people realize. Um, it's one I've talked about a lot. I just did a video about other games that are supposed to be this year. Uh, Bright Memory Infinite, which wasn't confirmed yet. Um, and then over on PlayStation, I mean, I already mentioned Kina. And then if, if Horizon does manage to stay in 2021, I honestly, if there's even rumors that it's it's going to be delayed and those conversations are actually happening, they should just delay it. Like, don't mess around with that game. Make sure it's the best it possibly can be. There is no reason. Well, I guess besides money, right? It doesn't have to come out in holiday in the holiday window. It could literally launch in February and crush because there's not going to be anything competing with it in that Q1 of 2022. So, yeah. And I think, yeah, I the, mean, it's I not like the they big... needed to sell PS5s or something. Like, no, it's... like, yeah, they don't even, they can't even make enough PS5s to sustain the market. Like, yeah. no console manufacturer can right now. So, uh, yeah, th- there's, I don't see any negative in delaying it to, to next year. Like, what you're you're gonna still sell a crazy amount of consoles. It, Sony won't Sony won't risk yeah. it. If there's any question, like their their high quality polished first party game, that's like their whole thing. And and anything to put that in jeopardy, they're not gonna want to risk. So uh, the only other the only other one I want to mention, Paul, is one that I think you would love, and I really hope it doesn't slide to 2022. Lost Ark. I keep talking about this one. I actually downloaded the Russian version of the game, which fans made a translation for and played it. And the combat is so fun. That one. I remember this. Yeah. It's like a top down Diablo style game. It is Mm -hmm. so good. And the character models look great. The powers are really fun to use. There's actually a semi interesting story tied to it. It, it's been going forever in other countries, and this is the is first it time. Korean? It's Where's US. it from? I think it originated in Korea, but I, don't quote me okay. on that. So yeah, I remember if, seeing that. I'm like, is this Diablo something? And they're like, no, no, it's a super popular game that just isn't in the U.S. yet. So yeah, so 
to me, that's one of those games that's going to have this, just like Destiny, right? Destiny won't win Game of the Year, but it had 64,000 people playing it at any given moment today. There's just these games with these, and that's just on Steam. There's these games with these mega, mega audiences and a game like Destiny having 64,000 players at a time when nothing is happening in that game is nuts, right? So. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention Destiny at all. The, the reason being is because there is you know no Destiny expansion. Win. Well, yeah, but I know. I mean, it. you know, it could. And, you know, I'm playing Destiny more than anything else. But like yeah. in this year specifically, there's no expansion. So like Beyond Light was last year and then Witch Queen is next year. So all of 2021 <laughs> is is no expansion. So we just have season 15. Uh, and I, it, the seasons of Destiny this year have been very, right. very good. Um, both of them have been. Uh, so I think not to leave that out of the conversation, I, I certainly think that is a fantastic ongoing game. Uh, it's just a little weird because there, there were no major expansions this entire year. Yeah. Uh, final question. If, if you think it's Call of Duty, you're not allowed to say Call of Duty. So we'll just say Call of Duty will probably sell the best this year just because it's Call of Duty and it's depressing, but it will sell the best. I think Call of Duty's the perception has also shifted because Warzone's free. I think a lot of people are playing Warzone. I would be really curious to know. I should go back and listen to the last Activision earnings call. How much do the core releases do? Because I have to imagine they get more revenue from a game like I know Warzone. Call of Duty Mobile made a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. People always laugh off mobile games, but it's just like, yeah, those no. games make so much money you can't even fathom it. <laughs> like it's yeah, insane. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. But okay. So the question is, sorry to get around to it so late. What game's gonna do the best this year? Out of throughout the whole year, what game is just gonna be like a smash success? There's several G- GTA five. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 might it'll be, be right. on the it'll be on the list no yeah. for real i think it'll because be around it's, it's re-releasing it's re-releasing on next gen this fall they put it on game pass and they pulled it like a week later i was like oh okay while well, you're releasing the next gen version you know yeah. again it's like it's the, it's the modern skyrim so you, you so that's, that's probably not even a joke honestly like yeah. if it is you know if the if the next gen version does hit i could easily see that being at least top five um yeah if not higher, but I mean, I guess we can rule FIFA, eh, whatever, like sports games are almost in the same category of Call of Duty. Halo Infinite is interesting because like as good as I think that a game will do, it's always hard to gauge exclusives mm-hmm. because, you know, it, it, it limits the market by such a, a wide margin to that degree. That said, I think Halo will sell like crazy compared to pretty much all other Xbox games. I, Third party stuff, though, it's a little harder to see any like clear breakout hits that aren't Call of Duty. I, I think um, I, I don't imagine like Guardians of the Galaxy or Far Cry 6 is, is going to be some massive sales monster. I, Far Cry might do pretty well because it's such an established franchise. But I mean, it like like the money these days is in either mobile or the ongoing service games. Yeah. Like so that, the, those will be the like Apex Legends is probably going to out earn, you know, half these games we're even talking about here. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just like the, the top 10 charting games list is very weird because it's all Call of Duty sports games and GTA and then like some random stuff. Elden Ring's next year, right? It's not, it's not this year. No, no, no. no. OK, just making it, sure it's I'm like, like it's did like, we forget to say like, Elden Ring. I think that's isn't that Q1 um, or it has a date even. Wasn't that like February or March or something? Yeah, it's not on this list that I have open. Uh, look it up. But anyway, it's next year. So um, January 21st. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. OK, so that's it's right close. next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think there's a few games that have the potential not talking about called Call of Duty. I assume will do well. The true winner will probably be some mobile game. None of us will play, you know, but um, <laughs> but it like bejeweled or something will do the best game of the year. The new bejeweled My, Minecraft. Yeah. PUBG. Um, <laughs> but truly I, I think there's two games that have a potential to be massive successes this holiday season, not including call of duty. Of course, call of duty, um, battlefield 2042 and halo infinite. I think halo infinite has a chance because it is releasing with a massive install base, Xbox one, Xbox one X, Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X plus PC. It's going to be on Steam. It's going to be on Xbox. It's going to be free. So you talk about those continuous ever evolving games. I think Halo has the potential to be a massive success. And then in terms of pure sales, 
Battlefield 2042, PS5, Xbox Series X and X, PlayStation 4, like PlayStation 4 alone is 100 million consoles or 100 million users. And then Xbox One and Switch. So like, I don't remember how much Xbox sold. It was a lot less, but it's going to be on basically. Oh, sorry, not Switch, but PC. It's not going to be on Switch. I was reading Guardians of the Galaxy or other. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. How was that on Switch? Oh, that's because of like it's <laughs> yeah. streaming or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Battlefield 2042, though. Yeah. PC. So. Those two, just based on install bases of the platforms it's launching on alone, I think have the biggest chance of success this coming year, probably giving the edge to Battlefield. Well, th that's a good question about Xbox games, because it's like, can you even count Xbox games? Because, like, they're not being sold like that, really. Like, you, you can buy them, but, like, mm -hmm. everyone's playing on Game Pass. And so, and then Halo multiplayer is free, and they're going to have, like, Battle Pass is like it's Apex Legends or Warzone. Yeah, well, I so mean, like, honestly, all it's almost sales, a live service. <laughs> well, so if you're talking about sales, I'm sure Battlefield is going to have microtransactions of some sort, right? And Halo is right. going to have microtransactions from some sort. And the crazy thing is people usually end up spending more on those than they do on like a $60 game. And that's largely why the market has come to standardize skins and and little things like that, like XP boosts and cosmetics, yeah. because people are more apt to pay for that and pay more than $60 for the life of the product. It's why we still have Rainbow Six, mm, right? Who they does release... that? That's... <laughs> I would... Yeah, I didn't right. just buy a $25 Ariana Grande skin in Fortnite. That's... Yeah, see, <laughs> or like the Batman skin, or the like how much did Batman make in Fortnite? So... Yeah, you know, well, it, it is weird, though, because like Halo is essentially operating like a live service game with like, mm -hmm. it's like free to play, essentially. Yep with with uh income streams so like the old kind of like what's charting and like who sold the most box copies like that's going to be all third party and then sony because so uh, sony's gonna have their 70 dollar box copies so you know X xbox will have will find success certainly in a lot of users and then they may make bonus money through microtransactions but game pass like everything began game pass is totally like you know change the dynamic and we'll, we'll go through this next year with starfield too yeah. because like there won't be Starfield sales like in the traditional sense, like well, everybody, to the same extent. So. Every, you know, Halo is really in interesting because it is a live service multiplayer game that's free. Like you can't force money into their pockets with that game unless you buy yeah. the battle pass or something or like get the campaign. And I don't think the campaign has as much chance as the multiplayer to do like insane numbers. Halo Infinite's going to sell the campaign will sell very well. But is it going to sell better than Battlefield? No, simply because of install base, right? That's the only reason I would give the edge to Battlefield in that case. Um, and then, yeah, you mentioned something else I was going to go off on a tangent about, but I lost it. So <laughs> too, too many tangents. Yeah. Um, man, yeah. Uh, oh, you talked about Game Pass and uh, how you know that affects sales. Well, then you see Ascent. Everybody's talking about how that game did five million dollars in in revenue. So, yes, things coming to Game Pass are a great service, but I argue that no, it doesn't seem to have a huge negative impact on revenue. They've said multiple times that people wind up wanting to have ownership of those product products, regardless of whether or not they're on Game Pass. Game Pass is sort it's of so like weird a, to me. Yeah, it, <laughs> but you wouldn't more think power to you, I guess. Yeah. But, you know that game's going to go away. And if you love it, you're going to buy your physical copy. You're going to yeah. just make sure you have it in your library forever so you have that safe feeling inside. And you get the discount also just because you have the game. So, yeah. Anyway, lots to think about and just a lot of perception things with where the industry is at and what is successful right now. Paul, thanks for having this conversation with me. I think we should get out of here. Where can people find your stuff and buy your amazing T-shirts? Amazing t-shirts. Uh, I'm Apple Dassey on Twitter. You can buy my uh, fantastic merch that I just launched uh, <laughs> on, on my YouTube page, uh, inspired by Dustin's own merch, who, who he really helped me out uh, figuring that out. So thank you. <laughs> uh, I wish you all the success. It's really, really cool to see it. And I, I, I kind of want to buy one myself. <laughs> so maybe you'll, you'll have an order soon. I'll give uh, you a discount. All right. Oh, all right. Great, great. All right. Well, I'm going to get out of here. See you for the next one, everybody. 
Hey, thank you so much for watching Paul versus S and be sure to check out Paul's stuff. I'll put up a link right here so you can watch his videos. He posts pretty regular. Also, if you like the kind of content that I've been posting, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. So you, when you, ah, so you know, when it goes live, wow, they're always off the cuff. So I make mistakes and stuff, but thank you for watching. If you want to become a member, memberships are turned on. And yes, I also have a merch store with coffee cups, but first I got to say thank you to the members who have supported this channel. I'm going to get out of here. Have a wonderful night, everybody.